guess it's been a bit since I've been on YouTube. Um, the time really did fly. I didn't mean for this much time to go by between my last video and this one, but between all the wedding planning, um, traveling, and other things going on, this video slipped my mind. And when I did remember to work on it, for some reason I was really dragging my feet. This video will have quite a bit of talking. I'm going to do a more thorough review of the shocked flat iron spinning wheel and something about putting my voice out there so much just kind of freaked me out. I didn't really know how to start or how to structure things. Uh, it's a bit of a daunting task. So I procrastinated, but now that I have a chunk of time, I thought, you know, there's another video that I really, really, really want to put out, but that's really fun. It's about a current craft I'm working on right now, but I, I can't publish that one until I get this one done. So with that little carrot as my motivator, um, I actually got some work done and I'm able to send this one out to you all. So for this video, I am going to break it down into a couple different segments. I am going to discuss the assembly of the wheel again. Uh, I mentioned this briefly in my last video, but I want to talk about it again just so that it's all in one place. And I actually have a couple extra details here um, that I didn't have before. So we're going to talk about assembly. Um, I'll also talk about the overall quality and my opinion of the wheel, my experience uh, with spinning, and this will be broken up into a couple different components. So the initial setup when you're starting a spin, the actual spinning of yarn, the speed, starting and stopping, a couple different details there. And then I also want to go over overall comfort in my opinion, of the wheel, of using the wheel. So that's a little bit of a breakdown of what we're going to go through today. So without further ado, let's just jump right into things. Before I start breaking down my experience with the assembly of this wheel, just a little bit more for you, I wanted to introduce you to this wheel first. This is the flat iron spinning wheel from Shocked. And here is a little bit about what the brand has to say. This is their description, the first paragraph of it. The flat iron spinning wheel rises from a flat packed box, much like the boulders iconic flat irons tilted up from a once horizontal position. The elegant design of the formed maple ply body calls upon the same drama that makes the flat irons so striking. This unique Saxony style wheel is anything but traditional, much like the Shocks hometown of Boulder, Colorado. So this wheel is a Saxony style wheel. It definitely has a bit more of a modern aesthetic. I've heard some people refer to it as an Ikea Saxony. It is a double treadle wheel. And I personally prefer a double treadle. That's one of the reasons why I selected it. I really like the rhythm of having both my feet going and both of my hands. I don't like single treadles where I just have one foot going but both of my hands moving. For me, it throws me off a little bit. This wheel is also fairly customizable. You can build it with either a left sitting or a right sitting flyer, which is nice for those of us out there that um, are either left hand dominant or mixed dominant, depending on your spinning style. There are three different tension styles that can be used on this wheel. This is also a big perk for me, one of the reasons why I chose it. The wheel also comes with both medium and fast whirls. The speed ratios on the medium whirl are 10.4 to one and 12.4 to one, while the uh, speed ratios on the fast whirl is a or are 15 to 1 and 17.4 to 1 so you have some good options there i think there are additional whirls that you could buy if i'm not mistaken i would check the shocked website to see what accessories can be used with this wheel if you're looking for something a little bit different let's talk assembly 
In my last video, I did mention some of the issues that I came across with the assembly. I found, for me personally, the assembly to be time intensive and very difficult. There are a lot of pieces to this wheel, uh, just quite a lot of components, and the whole process itself was fairly intimidating. I had to break it up over the course of several days because it just became frustrating. There are many times where I would read the instructions and understand in general how to go about doing it, but not really understand how I'm supposed to orient things. The manual itself is well drawn and it does come in color, which helps, but sometimes it's just hard to understand what what's what is meant by written instructions at least for me personally maybe that's not the case for you but for me sometimes i can read written instructions a couple times and still be quite confused as to what's supposed to happen so for me this was definitely a very complicated task when it came to the other wheel that I have, I felt like the assembly was fairly quick. I did it in maybe two hours. There weren't a lot of components and things mostly came pre-built. So it made it very user-friendly. In this case, um, you are forming the body yourself through the tools provided. Like you're not carving anything, but the ply body itself is not curved in the way that the Saxony wheel body is curved right out of the box. So as you're assembling it, you're having to create the curves of the body by bending it using through the use of a third arm tool that they have. I'm sorry if that's kind of difficult to understand. I don't have any video of me doing that, but what I did find out after I had already assembled it is that Shocked does have a video that shows you how to do it. And that video is actually really, really helpful if I had actually followed instructions properly and watched the video first. My experience would have been a completely different story, I'm pretty sure. As for some of the things here that I think are really positive, one I already mentioned, it's really great having the manual be in color and not just be pictures but have words. That's really beneficial. The video, if you follow instructions and watch it beforehand, is very helpful, a really good resource. I really appreciated that all the hardware that is separated into different bags and that's numbered according to what step they belong to. That was amazing. I did not have to fish around and look for things. They were already organized and in order. I absolutely adored that. Originally, I was thinking of giving this process a 3.5 out of 5 just because it was quite a bit, but my mind has since changed. Uh, just the other day I received a box in the mail from Shocked that I was not expecting and it turns out that there were a couple things that were wrong with my flat iron um, that made things more difficult to assemble and I, I had no clue but they in their QC process after the fact found out and sent me replacement parts with instructions of how to fix the problems and um, a sincere apology from them and that meant the world to me it changes completely how i feel about the assembly of you know it was difficult but there were some things that were wrong that i as a user wouldn't have known but they found out and immediately sent me replacements with um, instructions and ways to get a hold of them if i need further support so I think overall, despite my difficulties, the positives of the um, other components here mean that I am going to give assembly a four out of five for this wheel. Now I wanna talk about overall quality in my opinion and the things that really stood out for me about this wheel. The first thing that really stood out to me in opening the box was the manual. It comes in color, it shows how to customize your wheel for left-handed or right-handed spinning. 
there are written instructions as well as the diagrams and the diagrams themselves show orientation of things and how to flip things around. Everything was really detailed and this speaks to me of a company or a team that cares a lot about their products and about their customers and I greatly appreciated that. It set the stage for all of my impressions moving forward, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. In this case, it was a good thing. They really set the bar high and they fulfilled it as I continued to open my package and get to know my wheel a little bit better. So again, talking about opening up the box and looking at all the pieces, each piece was clearly labeled and wrapped by hand. The plastic packaging was also very minimal. A lot of it was butcher's paper, which I greatly appreciate. I don't need to be throwing away plastic all the time. Having it written out by hand too, exactly what each piece was, meant that when it was time for me to organize everything and lay things out piece by piece, it was so easy. I knew exactly which piece was the maiden, the front maiden versus the back maiden. I knew where my treadle bars were and I didn't have to unwrap things. So for me, why that makes a lot of sense is the assembly itself took a couple days for me and I do have a pet, I have a dog, and he can be a little bit chaotic. He runs around, he does not care what he bumps into, and the last thing I want is if every piece of my wheel is laid out, me to put together later, and he gets a little excited with the zoomies for him to ending, end up scratching up my pieces. So being able to keep everything wrapped up and know what it is and not have to unwrap it to match it th to the pictures meant that I had more of a chance of keeping things in really good condition while they were waiting to be used. So if you have a household that's a little bit chaotic and you want to keep things wrapped up uh, for as long as possible before assembling your wheel, that should be possible because they've clearly labeled it out. It also takes out the guesswork. I don't know if you've ever been assembling something and you're taking a look at the piece and your manual and you're trying to compare the shapes and figure it out exactly because maybe they didn't put a sticker on it like A3 or whatever and it just gets really frustrating. Well, you don't have to do that in this case because it's actually written out on the paper that the piece is wrapped in and that meant a lot to me. Um, going back to the packaging, even the tape used was paper tape for the most part, so again it made cleanup um, much more guilt-free in my case and um, a lot easier to figure out how to recycle things if you're a, in a place where a sorting stuff prior to recycling is really important. And when it came to the wood pieces themselves, all the wood pieces of this wheel are maple and they're ply, so they're cut um, and they come finished for you. There is a varnish, a clear varnish already on it. And all of the wood pieces came in absolutely beautiful condition. I didn't see any scratches, dents, nicks, or splits. That was one thing that I was mostly worried about is because it was, um, a, it is a ply, cut wheel so it's not like turned or anything it's just the pieces are cut out i was worried about splitting if there was splitting when they cut the holes and if splitting would occur as i'm putting screws in I, i've faced that with woodworking in the past and i was concerned that that might happen here but i didn't have any issues with splitting at all and all hardware was present and accounted for so my wheel did have a problem with a couple no just one piece of hardware I wasn't quite sure at the time th that the problem was an actual problem I thought maybe it was just me not knowing enough um, I had one washer that was the wrong size and I had some issues with that um, so that problem did come up for me but shocked reached out to me when they discovered the error I didn't even have to tell them they found the error in their own records and they sent me a free replacement washer along with instructions on how to install it. Um, so overall, even though there was a discrepancy with my wheel, Shocked promptly fixed it without me even having to notify them that there was a problem. So overall, I am very happy with the quality of all the pieces. There was no damage. 
no damage came in from shipping. Everything was taped down really securely in the box. So there was no shifting during shipping. And while the assembly itself took me quite a bit of time, it came together beautifully, even with some issues that I wasn't aware that were present um, and has been fully functional ever since I put it together. So I would happily, very, very happily give the quality of this wheel a five out of five. Now that we've got the boring stuff out of the way, let's talk about the things that you actually want to hear about. What is spinning like on this wheel? The first thing I'm going to cover is setup. So how do you even start filling a bobbin? For me, the setup on this wheel is not my favorite, but let's just make sure we're all clear here. I really only have experience with the Ashford Kiwi, which is a castle style. Everything is very vertical um, and setup is very quick, no complexities to it. But that being said, there are certain sacrifices you have to make when it comes to the tension system. So when we're talking about this wheel, the flat iron, it's a Saxony style and it has three different types of tension styles you can use. It's a little bit more complicated. The first thing that you need to do when you're setting up is unlock the mother of all so that you can tilt it forward and get the bobbin off of the flyer. Unlocking, unlocking the mother of all for me on this wheel feels a little bit awkward. Still, I'm not in the habit of it. It takes some thought to figure out how to do it and I'm always terrified that my mother of all is going to pop off. So I'm not a big fan of this but hopefully it gets better with time. I've also had some issues with putting on the whorl on my flyer. I think it just sticks a little bit, but over time the holes should wear down and this should get easier. I'm setting up the drive band and the brake bands. I also find a little bit awkward at this time. Again, I think mostly the setup for me, I don't like just because of the learning curve. This should improve with time as I get used to everything, but as my initial rating for this wheel, I'm going to give the experience of setting up my bobbin to spin a 3.8 out of 5. This could improve as I get to know her better, but for the moment, mm, it's not the greatest. Now, once the setup is done and we get spinning, things are completely different. I love spinning on this wheel. Overall, the tension system has been absolutely amazing. Both the tension on the brake and drive band are adjustable, and I am loving that. I have only tried scotch tension so far. That's my comfort zone, so that's what I've used. I have barely had to adjust anything throughout a whole spin. With my other wheel, normally I have to adjust my tension quite frequently as I am filling my bobbin, but with this wheel, pretty much I set it and I go, and there's very little changes that need to be made. I didn't have any issues with fighting my brake. I didn't have any problems with my fiber slipping from my hands or jerking. It just spins as smooth as butter when it comes to the tension. I give the tension system itself a 4.8 out of 5. It's my favorite tension I've worked with, tension system I've worked with. That's not saying much considering I've only ever used two wheels, but I absolutely love the tension system on this wheel. Overall, the speed I've also greatly enjoyed. The slowest speed ratio is still fairly fast but all speeds seemed pretty comfortable for me. I didn't have any situations where I felt like the fiber was going to fly out of my hands, even when I was going pretty fast. Um, so the way that the wheel spins, even when we're going pretty quickly, is very smooth. I give the speed a five out of five. Another thing that comes into play a lot with spinning for me is stopping and starting. I've mentioned before I have a dog and sometimes he wants to get in the middle of what I'm doing or maybe he decides to go goof off somewhere and do something he's not supposed to. So I might need to stop very quickly 
um, in, be- in the middle of a spin. So overall, getting the wheel to start with only my feet was pretty easy. There are some times where I may feel like I need to use my hand to get it going, and this would be when the right tre- treadle was at its peak. I might need to assist a little bit, um, but I think that might just be how I assembled the footman. I might have made it a little bit too tight, and I plan on adjusting that and seeing if it helps in the future. Stopping is really fast and it's very easy and even if you stop really quickly I didn't have any issues with my yarn trying to fly out of my hand or problems there It doesn't jerk to a stop. It stops quickly, but very smoothly. So that I very much appreciate Overall the handling on this wheel has been wonderful and I give the handling of it a 4.5 out of 5 Now I want to talk about comfort. I think this is something that maybe we don't think about that much, but you're going to be spending a lot of time at your wheel. So comfort is very important. And when it comes to comfort, I'm going to talk about more than just how it feels to sit at, but I want to talk about the weight and portability, your body position when you're on it, and the sound. Because I think We tend to forget about the ergonomics of sound when we're talking about things, but repeated sounds do bother people. So starting out with the weight and portability, for a Saxony, the flat iron is very light. For overall body position, the treadles, I think it's important to keep a note, are very long. So for me, I like this because I can change my position of my feet however I feel in the moment. it seems like it's very adjustable to whoever's sitting at. Having the orifice to one side, I found surprisingly comfortable as well. I'm used to a castle style, so I'm used to sitting very up front and in my wheel's face all the time, but having this orifice to the side means that I can match it to how I hold my fiber a lot easier. I don't feel like my arms are extended or overextended, um, that is, for long periods of time. It is definitely a much more like lazy, relaxed spinning position, and I have greatly enjoyed that. As for the overall sound, I will say that the treadling so far has not been as smooth as my Ashford Kiwi. At first, this did bother me a little bit, having so much feedback on my feet. What I mean by that is as you treadle, you can feel the footman's working in your treadle. So you have a little bit of vibration in your feet. And then as the footman sort of adjust and move, there is a sound to it. At first, this kind of threw me off a little bit. I wasn't super into it. But after getting to know my wheel a little bit more and figuring out how to treadle, I realized that I was treadling too hard. I was expecting a lot more uh, resistance in my treadles than what this wheel would actually provide. And so I was hitting the pedals too hard and that was causing a lot of noise um, and which was giving me a lot more feedback and an uncomfortable experience. Once I started gentling how I handled her, I found that the sound was a lot less and that the feedback was less as well. I've also started to enjoy the rhythm of the treadles, enjoy how I can feel my treadling a lot more than I would otherwise, but it is something that has been a learning experience. It's been something that I've grown to like over the past couple months. That may not be the case for you. So I would say if you're someone that does not like having a lot of feedback on your feet or sound, then this might not be the wheel for you because, you know, everybody's different and we all like things different. So this might not be the pick for you if you want a wheel that treadles really smoothly and is absolutely quiet. Overall, my rating for this wheel for comfort is a 4.5 out of 5. 
I greatly enjoy it. I feel like I can sit at it for quite a bit and spin for a while before I feel overexerted or need to stop. I haven't had any issues with leg cramping or arm cramping since using it and it spins very smoothly, uh, and, which makes it a lot more enjoyable. The only thing here that I think could be negative is the sound and the feeling of the treadling, just how the footmen react and respond to your treadling. For some people, I could see that being an absolute no thank you, but for me, I've learned to enjoy it and um, it's something that has just become part of the rhythm of my spinning experience with this wheel. And here is my overall summary of my first impressions of this wheel, looking at the different categories that I talked about today and my average rating for each one. Overall, I really love this wheel so far and am very much looking forward to working with her in the future. I know today's video was a lot longer than normal. Thank you for staying until this point and waiting it out with me. I have a lot of fun things coming out in the future and I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Have a great day everyone. Bye!